Saints, we're here in um, Glasgow. I'm here with Pastor Chris, Brother Repentance in Glasgow, and um, the grand finale, grand finale of the crowd. The wilderness is about to start. And today, guys, we covet in your prayers, covet that you stand with us, pray for us as we come to the end of the cry of the wilderness tour where the sound of awakening and repentance is being released hallelujah and uh, brothers and sisters this is where the crowning moments of this tour from europe to the whole of the united kingdom is beautiful and uh, guys just keep us in your prayers in jesus name Oh, yeah, Lord Father God, just as we step out in faith, Lord Father God, with the great commission that you give us yourself, Jesus. You said in the Gospel of Mark 15, verse 16, Go therefore out into the whole world and preach the gospel to every creature, Lord Father God. Lord, as we step out in faithfulness, Lord Father God, under your authority, under your anointing, Lord Father God, we pray today, Lord Father God, for protection from your throne room, Lord Father God. But one, what we pray for, Lord Father God, is for sinners to come to repentance, Father yes. God. Lord Father God, the lost, the drug addict, Lord Father God, will be set free. The sick will be healed today, Lord Amen. Father God. Lord Father God, that we see the fruits today. We shall see the fruits of of what you have equipped us to do, Lord That's Father right. God. Lord, I just pray that, Lord Father God, that you'll wake up every sleeping believer, Lord Father yes. God, within your house, Lord Father God, to come out because the harvest is plentiful, but yes. the workers are few. Yes. Lord Father God, send the workers out into the streets of Glasgow, out into the nations, Lord Father God. Yes. Watch over us as we sound the sound of the alarm over Glasgow, Buchanan Street now, Lord Father God. We pray, Lord Father God, that the wicked shall flee, Lord Father God, or they will fall to their knees in repentance. Lord, bring them to us today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. amen. As we sound this alarm, is to remind you that the Lord himself will descend from heaven with the voice of an angel. Who is that Lord? The Lord Yeshua HaMashiach. The Lord Jesus Christ. He's coming again. Not with the jingle bells of Santa Claus. He's not coming again with the ho 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 of Santa Claus. But he sure is coming with thousands of angels with flaming fire. Not coming to die as a, not coming to die as a lamb on the cross or be born as a baby in a manger but he's coming as a roaring lion taking vengeance upon all those that know not God and today we sound the alarm to awake you it is an alarm of awakening it is a sound of repentance and it's a cry of the wilderness 
And today in the name of Jesus, as we sound the alarm, is to remind the people of Scotland, return back to God because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. People of Scotland, today it is a day of salvation. As I sound the alarm, my brother is going to preach and we release a frequency of reception that you will receive the Lord Jesus and that his word will find a fruitful place in your heart and bring transformation and deliverance. Hallelujah. today you know we're ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ and we've come out today to preach the good news hallelujah 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 praise God today is the day hallelujah praise God you know sorry for the interruption there folks we've just sounded the alarm over at Glasgow you know, my name is Pastor Chris. I'm a local minister here in the beautiful, beautiful city of Glasgow. This is my brother in Christ, fellow bond servant Andre, traveled up on a, such a mission field, on such a pilgrim for the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, we come here today to preach the good news. And the good news is, the good news is in John 3.16, it says, Oh, ha, ha, hallelujah. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to whomsoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. My friends, my friends, let me tell you a bit about myself. I am not a great man. I was never a glorious man. You know, there was one time I was trapped in addiction to cocaine, to alcohol. I was a sinner, you know. I was such a wicked man. I was a broken man. I was in and out of prison. You know, but I didn't know that I needed saving. I didn't know there was a God. In fact, if there was a God, I wouldn't have believed in him until somebody like myself came and told me the good news, the good news of Jesus Christ. And the good news is that today, today your life can be changed, my friends. I was once a drug addict. I was once an alcoholic. I was in and out of prison. I had no hope until I was introduced to hope in the form of Jesus Christ. You know, when I confessed my sin before a holy God, when I said, Jesus, I am nothing but a broken man. I need change. I'm sick and tired of being stuck to a bag of cocaine. I'm sick and tired of being in the pubs. I'm sick and tired of being locked up. I need change. Please, please come and give me change. You know, that very day when I invited Jesus into my heart, you know, I become born again. And that is the gift of life. You know, I was a wicked sinner. I didn't know what I was doing was wrong. I had no conscience back then. But when I invited Jesus into my life, I invited Jesus into my life, he gave me a conscience. You know, I began to check my life, to check what I was doing. You know, when I was a drunkard, when I was a cocaine addict, and I was running in the bars and the clubs, everybody celebrated, Chris. Everybody cheered Chris on, but now I'm here preaching the true message from the true God, the God of the Bible. You know, I'm hated, I'm persecuted, I've been assaulted. This was once a Christian nation, this was a great nation, but sin has separated us from God. And that's where Jesus came in 2,000 plus years ago on a cross on a hill 2,000 plus years ago, an innocent man called Jesus, he died for me and he died for you, my friends. He died so he could take your place. He could take your place because he loves you that much. It doesn't matter who you are today. It doesn't matter your background, your circumstance. I want you to know today that you are loved, 
by Jesus Christ and he wants to know you. He wants to bring restoration back into your lives, back into this nation. You know, I was once a chaotic man, hell bent on taking drugs, on running around, fornicating, lying and deceiving. But now today I stand here with a great message, the good message of Jesus Christ. You know, you might say today, my friend, there's friend, there's many paths to the same God. You know, all paths lead to the same God. Let me tell you right now. But, but my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ said in the Gospel of John 14 and 6, He said, for I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life, that no man shall see the Father in heaven unless he cometh through me. Let me tell you, my friends, Hare Krishna cannot save you. Buddha cannot save you. Allah cannot save you. Boom, Muhammad cannot save you. Only Jesus Christ can save you, my friends. Today is the day of salvation, and today you can be set free. See, Jesus didn't call us to be anything apart from born again. You know, this world is perishing through the sinfulness and the wickedness of our transgressions. You know, my friends, my friends, today you can have a new life. You can have a glorious life. And there is no price to pay every other religion of the world. Their God wants you to bleed for them. Their God wants you to make sacrifice for them. But Christianity, the God of the Bible, he came, the sacrificial lamb for us. He took our place because he knew that we could not do it. We could not pay that price. So 2,000 plus years ago, I'm going to tell you a story. 2,000 plus years ago, on a cross, an innocent man whose name was Jesus, he took my place and he took your place. And on each side of Jesus, there was two criminals being punished for the sins that they committed. And on the one side of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, there was one man and he mocked God. He laughed at Jesus. He said, if you are truly God, then take yourself down from this cross and prove yourself to me. The other criminal turned around and said, he said, hey, why are you mocking this man? He said, why are you mocking this man? He said, we're here being punished for the crimes that we have committed. But this man is innocent. And that one thief, that one criminal, recognized who Jesus was. He recognized that he was the Son of God, that he was God in the flesh. And he said to Jesus, he said, today take me with you. And Jesus said to that one criminal who recognized who he was, he said, today you will be with me in paradise. My friends, my friends, today you can have freedom from whatever holds you captive. If you are held captive by any sickness, I once had so many problems with mental health, depression, anxiety. But today, through the blood of Jesus Christ, through the healing, cleansing power of the Word of God, the true Word of God, I have set free. I am born again. I no longer have to take medication to make me happy. I don't no longer have to go to the pubs, to the bars, to the clubs, to get drunk, to feel joy. When I want to feel joy, I just turn the pages of the greatest book. The Bible, best instructions before leaving earth. My friends, my friends, today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of salvation. We're calling you to come out from the world and to come into right relationship with Jesus Christ. You know, because Jesus Christ wants to know you. He doesn't hate you. He loves you. He loves you that much that he went to the cross and he died for my sins. He died for your sins. Now you tell me what other God has took his place and became sacrificed for you. What other God took your place? Let me tell you, my friends, God is alive today and he's alive in me. He's alive in my brother. Today, I'm no longer looking for my next fix or my next high because I am here with Jesus. I have the Holy Spirit. I have the good news. I have the message that sets people free. The Word of God will set you free. The Word of God will set you free. All you have to do is drop your religion. Drop your ways. You know, drop religion and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. The Word of God says, repent and believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. It doesn't say repent and believe in the Quran. It doesn't say repent and believe 
in yoga. It doesn't say repent and believe in Krishna. It doesn't say repent and believe in Buddha. No, it says repent and believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. Hallelujah. Praise God. to remind you from a place of love from the heart of the father that he so loved the world that he sent us his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him whether they be of any race blue race white race black race by the power of the shedding blood of jesus they can be made brand new friends today is a day of salvation it is not a day of condemnation, but it's a day of salvation. The Bible says, whosoever will call on the name of the Lord, they will be saved. So this salvation helps any sinner. You see, Jesus did not come to endorse sin or to allow men to sin at the expense of the shedding of his blood. His blood was shed to eradicate sinful deeds sinful activities and sinful nature and break the curse and remit sins. Friends, there are many of us who have emotional trauma because we're being attacked and oppressed by the devil. The good news is this, that our God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with power and by his spirit he went about doing good, healing all those that were oppressed of the devil. His coming was to destroy sin and to destroy everything sin has allowed into the world. Friends, the Bible says again, by one man sin came into the world and true sin came sickness, true sin came religion, true sin came diverse kinds of activities. And so if you have any question and you say, brother, what was God when I was struggling? How come are bad things happening to good people? The answer is in this thing, that one man allowed all wicked things to come. And the Bible says, therefore, we all have come short of the glory of God because we are all born in a sinful nature. And so we have the propensity to sin, even though we have not sinned yet. A child is born in sin. And hence they need the Savior, the Redeemer, Jesus Christ. We need Jesus to eradicate the nature of sin. And the disease of sin and the image of sin and the likeness of sin and everything that glorifies sin and friends today in the name of Jesus we have one assignment to deliver you from yourself friends we need Jesus in our life no Jesus no life why because in him was life and the life was the light of men you see he comes to give life and not a religion if you're looking for a religion, I can give you a list of religions. 
Islam is there, Hinduism is there, Buddhism is there, Taoism, nation, all those things don't give you a religion. But Jesus came into the world, not to give us a religion, but to give us eternal life. John 3.16 makes it very clear that for God so loved the world that he sent his son Jesus, not to give you a religion, but to give you everlasting life. Now religion cannot give you everlasting life, but it sure can give you a religious life. And you know what religion has done? It's brought division in humanity. And that is why today we're having Palestine's protests, Jewish protests, because of a religious foundation. Friends, the thing that you will unify humanity to divinity is Jesus. The Bible says, as many as received Yeshua HaMashiach, he gave them the power to become sons of God. Let me tell you why Jesus is important. There is no religion under heaven that will not miss, will not describe Jesus, a historical Jesus, to endorse the false theologies. Men will put Jesus in the book. The Hindus will speak about Jesus. The Muslims will speak about Jesus. The Buddhists will speak about Jesus. There's no religion that I do not know, even paganism, the pagans will speak about Jesus. They speak about a Jesus light. And friends, that is why we need this person. We don't need the religion because the religion divides. The religion brings hate. The religion brings confusion. The religion bears war. And that is why for God so loved the world that he sent his son in order to unify humanity back to divinity. Friends, the Bible says in the beginning God made man in his own image and likeness. Gave him dominion and power over birds of the air, over fishes of the sea, and over every creeping thing that creeped upon the earth. And that was when sin was not in the midst of man or in man, or was inbred in man. But the moment man sinned, religious activities were invented. Religious activity is man's way to God. But Jesus Christ is the way to the Father. That is why in John 14, 6, the Bible says that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You see, God's name is Yahweh for a reason. And Yahweh means I am. And there are many cases where Jesus said he was I am. Many Muslims will argue and say there's no way in the Bible where Jesus said he was God. Well, he didn't say he was God, G-O-D, translated the translation for Yahweh. He said he was I am before Abraham was I am. Because he knew the name of God, which was I am, Yahweh. Many cases, Jesus said he was I am, and because he said he was I am, the Jews killed him. They nailed him to the cross, allowed the Roman Empire to crucify him. Historically proven that Jesus existed in his time. His existence was not to demonstrate power. His existence was to demonstrate the love of the Father. And this love was demonstrated. The demonstration of his life lies in the book of Isaiah 53. He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. And the chastisement of the men and women and children in Scotland was upon him. And by his stripes we were healed. Friends, this same Jesus who knew all things and was in the beginning with God and is God. And by him everything was made and everything we see with our naked eyes was not made without him. By him, the Bible says, in him was life. You see, this same Jesus was a vehicle that transported eternal life to humanity. The Bible says, all men have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We've fallen short to a religion. We've fallen short to Catholicism. We've fallen short to paganism. We've fallen short in our parties and our all diverse kinds of religion. We've fallen short to Islam. We're falling short to Buddhism, Shintoism. We're falling short to um, what we call Celtism. Some of you are Celtics and pagans, so you worship the creation rather than the creator. We turn the truth into a lie. And friends, today is a day of salvation. Some of you, you worship your gender identity. You worship your homosexual identity, lesbian identity. None of these things give men eternal life. Men will not die and take their religion in the afterlife. 
Men will not die and take Islam in the afterlife. Men will not die and take Catholicism in the afterlife. Men will not die and take Mormonism in the afterlife. The only thing we take in the afterlife is eternal life. Friends, I had a conversation with a brother the other day. He said, Brother Andre, I will go to heaven. And I knew he was a sinner. And I said, why would you go to heaven? He says, because I'm a good man. Friends, do you remember that there were two trees in the garden of evil? One was a tree of life and the other was a tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You see, not everything that is life is good and not everything that is good is life. That is why God sent his son into the world not to give us, to make us good men, but he sent his son into the world to give you eternal life. It is the life eternal that will have your name written in the book of life. And friends in Scotland, if you think being a good man will send you to heaven, you have been deceived. Good men receive a visitation from Santa Claus. Santa Claus has a list of good men and good women. But God's book is not a book of good men and good women, but it's the book of life. And that is why when you repent and believe in Jesus, God imputes into your life an eternal life. And that eternal life makes you have your name written in the book of life. And the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he didn't send his son to make you a good man or a good woman. He sent his son into the world to make you a God man. A God man is one that has eternal life. A God woman is a woman that has eternal life. Do you have eternal life? Because when you don't have eternal life, you will be afraid of death. Many in three years ago were afraid of, of that coronavirus because friends, they didn't have eternal life. Friends, that many of you have life insurances, burial insurance. You have insurance for your cars and your phones. But when it comes to having insurance for your soul, you don't have it. Rather, you would rather sell your soul to the devil for the things of this world. And many in Hollywood are selling their soul to the devil. God bless you, dear sister. What is happening in Palestine? Let me pray for Palestine. Let me pray. So, Father, we pray for peace. We pray they will encounter the Prince of Peace. We pray there will be unity. We pray that they will repent and give their life to the Lord. Father, we pray that they will be convicted of sin, of righteousness, and judgment. We pray that there be peace in the Middle East. Let there be a unification by the power of Christ. In Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you. What's your name? Good. Let me give you this. You need to know what will happen in the last days. Inshallah hasn't saved anyone, dear sister. Inshallah doesn't give people eternal life, or else I'll be saved. I've realized there's only one that gives life. All other religious forms, whether it's your Pope, whether it's your vicar, they can't give you eternal life, nor can they forgive your sins. That's why I depend on Jesus, the one that can bring me closer to the Father, the one that can remit my sins and give me eternal life. We call on Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. When there is madness and darkness in the world, we need the Prince of Peace. We need the light of the world. And his name is Yeshua Hamashiach. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And friends in Scotland, there's so much darkness in the world. And the light of religion has not brought any light to humanity. By the preaching of the gospel, we have light in the world. Friends, the way is narrow and very few find it. The broad way leads to death. A friend told me the other day that Islam is the fastest religion in the world. And I said that is so sad. Because the Bible says that broad is the way that leads to life. And there will be a remnant that will be saved in the last days. Friend, the Bible says narrow is the way that leads to life. Broad is the way that leads to death. Any fast growing religion is identified as a broad way religion. A broad way that invites mass traffic into life but friends today there are very few of you who will believe in the lord jesus and be saved and friends as we come closer of the reason why jesus died he died to save men from sin to remit sins of humanity he died to purge our conscience from dead works he died that you receive the gift of the holy ghost he died that you receive
receive the gift of eternal life because the wages of sin is death and the gift of God is eternal life. Friends, God's gift is not a Christmas gift. You see, your Christmas gift expires every year. That is why to this day, men are celebrating Christmas that expires every year. There's no Christmas gift that is eternal because your Christmas gift is not Jesus. They are perishable gifts. But here comes an unperishable gift. More than a thing, more than a creation. But God gives you himself, the gift to humanity. The gift that redeems men from their sins. And friends, the only thing that can redeem this world and redeem Scotland is the preaching of the gospel. Today, in the name of Jesus, we came to lead you to the way of life. You see, truth is not what you read in the university books. Truth is not what you know, theologically know, or historically have found. But truth is a person. And Jesus said, I am the truth. I am the way. I am the life. Until you meet Jesus, you do not know the way. And until you meet, you meet Jesus, you do not know the life. Until you meet Jesus, you do not know the light. And that is why we came to lift up his name like a banner. The Bible says, in the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Not the Lord Buddha, not the Lord Krishna, not the Lord Baha, and not the Lord Mohammed, but the Lord Yeshua, the one who died and rose from the grave. Because none of these laws of religion resurrected from the grave. The grave of Jesus Christ of Nazareth is empty. The grave of Buddha, Krishna, and Baha, and Muhammad are not empty. And men are surrounding his grave to worship him. But friends, we have a Messiah. The one who died and rose from the grave. This same Jesus whom we pray about, he was erased from the grave by the prayers of men. He was erased from the grave by a CPR instrument. The Bible says he rose on the third day by the power of his prophecy. He predicted his death, burial, and resurrection. Is there any prophet among men who can predict his death and fulfill his own prophecy? There is only one. His name is Jesus. And today, in the name of Jesus, we're pointing men to the way. We're pointing men to the life. We're pointing men to the light of God that lighted every man that cometh into the world. Friends, the Bible says, as many as received him, he gave them power to become sons of God. You see, Jesus doesn't give them power to be religious. Men have received power to be Muslim, to be Hindus, to be Buddhists, to be pagans, to be Mormons. But when you receive Jesus, you receive the power to become sons of God. People of Scotland, I'm born in the United Kingdom. I can never be a child of the royal family. But Jesus said, if a man be born again, he will see the kingdom. If a man be born again, he will enter the kingdom. Religious rituals and attendance and religious identity and membership does not give you access into the kingdom of God. That's why Jesus did not say repent for Islam has come. He didn't say, Jesus didn't say repent for Judaism has come. He didn't say repent for Palestine has come. He says the kingdom of the world of, of, of God is at hand. And today, except we repent, will likewise perish. And today, we're commanding all men everywhere that God has the days of your ignorance. God has winked, but now He commands all men everywhere repent. Repent, people of Scotland, or else you will likewise perish. Friends, the Bible says that the Lord Himself will descend from heaven with a voice of an archangel, coming with thousands of His angels with flames fire taking vengeance upon all those who know not God taking vengeance upon all those who do not obey the commandments of the gospel in other words for the Moses who do not heed to the commandments of the Injil it is not the commandment of any religion not the commandments of Buddha or Krishna or Baha one will enter the kingdom and not be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of God only if they head to the commandments of the gospel. Friends in Scotland, have you heard the gospel? Have you heard about the commandments of the gospel? Or maybe you're a Jew and you know about the commandments of Moses. Maybe you're a Moses and you know about the commandments of Muhammad. Maybe you're a Buddhist and you know the commandments of Baha. But the Bible says that the Lord himself 
In 2 Thessalonians, the chapter 1, the verse 8 and 7, he said, The Lord will take vengeance upon those who know not God, who know not the Yahweh, the one who begets and can be begotten. Friends, Allah and Yahweh are not the same. You see, Yahweh begets and is begotten, and he gave us his only begotten son. Friends, Allah, according to the Quran, cannot beget, nor is he begotten. So there is a division. Friends, today, choose whom you will serve. Either you serve Allah or you serve Yahweh. Because one gives eternal life and the other gives a religious life. Today, it is a day of salvation. And except we repent, we'll likewise perish. It is a day when one needs to make a decision where and who they will spend eternity with. Friends, for those who die in their religion, in their sins, they will find themselves locked down, sin with the devil with national teeth, burning and rolling in the lake of fire, crying for a drop of water, and it will be too late. And today, in the name of Jesus, I hold a trumpet in my hands to warn men to repent, for the Lord himself will descend with the blast of the shofar. The heavens will be open. The heavens will be open. The heavens will be open. And all eyes will see him. The atheists who do not believe in the creator will see the king of glory. Come in with clouds of heaven. With thousands of his angels with great trumpets. He will be coming with thousands of his angels. He will be coming with flaming fire. Taking vengeance upon all those who know not God. Today is the opportunity my friend. Today is that day that you could turn away from sins and call on the name of Jesus. Life is short and eternity is long. That is why we sound the alarm. We sound the alarm because by the power of the blast of the shofar, the Bible says the dead in Christ will be raised from the grave. Paul said, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall all be changed. Some will be changed into the costume of that nation. Some will be changed into the costume of life. The Bible say at the last trump, in the twinkle of an eye, we shall all be changed. The corruption will inherit incorruption, and mortality will inherit immortality, if they be in Christ. The Bible say those who are alive in Jesus will be translated to meet the Lord in the air. Friends, when the Lord comes, would you be among the number of those who will be marching in with the Lord in the heavenly place? Or would you be among the number who be waiting to be cast into the lake of fire, locked dancing with a devil with national team, burning the road and crying for a drop of water? Friends, the Bible says the liar, the fearful, the abominable, the sorcerer, the idolater will have their part in the lake of fire. They will have their part in the lake of fire. The liar, the infamy, the homosexual, the bisexual will not inherit the kingdom of God. And this is what God is saying. This is the inheritance of those who do not obey the commandments of his gospel. And today we come preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus that gives you an eternal inheritance. Not an inheritance of the earth, but an inheritance with God. The Bible says a man in Christ is co hedged with him. A man in Christ has received a spiritual inheritance in heavenly places. A man in Christ is redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. A man in Christ is seated with Christ in heavenly places, far above principalities and powers. A man in Christ, a man in Christ is complete. A man in Christ can do all things through Christ who strengthen him. Are you in Christ or are you in religion? Because by the blast of the trumpet, religious men who are dead in their religious faith will not be raised. Religious living men and women who are, have faith in their religion will also not be translated. And so today we sound the alarm. We sound the alarm to let you know that the wages of sin is death and the gift of God is eternal life. We sound the alarm to let you know come by and without money, without price. For the wells of salvation is flowing. So they were saying, Come ye to the water and drink, because the pretext of men, the wells of alcoholism, the wells of drug addiction, marijuana cannot quench your test, sex will not quench your test. Practicing yoga, practicing divination, necromancy, and all diverse kinds of witchcraft will not practice, will not quench the test of life. Practicing Halloween will not quench that test. Friends, having a lot of money will not quench that test. For Jesus said, what will it profit a man? 
if it did profit a man, Jesus wouldn't say that. But he said, what would it profit a man if he gains the whole world? And yet he loses his soul. And many are sending their soul to the devil in a handbasket. And today, in the name of Jesus, I hear the Lord calling every man everywhere in Scotland. Come ye to the water and drink. Come ye and drink. Come ye and drink of the wells of our Lord Jesus Christ. In him is life and the life is the light of men. And friends, as I come to the end of this message, today I'm here to let you know that we do not preach this message to cause harassment, distress and alarm. But the truth hurts. The truth is offensive. The truth is disturbing. The truth is shocking. But the truth sets you free. The Bible says you will know the truth. And the truth will set you free. And today God wants to set men free from sin. Because sin is damning. Sin is destructive. Sin leads men to hell. Sin blinds men. Sin blinds and causes men's eyes to be closed. Sin is destructive. Sin is an instrument of death that has brought many to death. But Jesus is the way of life. It's the truth of life. It's the light of life. Today come ye to the water. Turn away from your sins. Repent from all your sins and call on his name. Jesus went about saying, repent, repent even to a Jewish nation. He was calling them out of their sins. Because by their tradition, they made the commandment of God to non effects. Rebuke Pharisees and Sadducees. Because by their religious opinions and statement, they veiled men from the truth. They put yokes on men. But Jesus said, if any man should come up to me, let him pick up his cross and follow me. He said, come unto me, O ye who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You see, when Jesus comes, tells you come, he doesn't say come and receive a Christian religion. He says, come and receive rest. He says, my yoke are easy and my burdens are lost. I, 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 my burden, I, my yokes are easy and my burdens are light. Friends, this rest God talks about is not a rest that endorses sin. When Jesus says, come unto me and I will give you rest, it doesn't give you rest, rest to continue to live a sinful nature. See friends, the rest that Jesus gave doesn't endorse the gangster life, the drug dealing life, the drunkard life. It doesn't allow prostitution. It doesn't allow all diverse kinds of sin, lying, hypocrisy, killing of babies fighting one nation against another the rest of god doesn't endorse the nation rising against nation and kingdom against kingdom the rest of god brings peace god's rest comes with a weight it comes with a burden it comes with a yoke it says my yoke are easy my burdens are light god's rest does not endorse like spanish and, and homosexuality doesn't endorse them when God's rest comes upon us, it drives us away from sin. It drives us away from the things God hates and leads us into the thing God loves. The Bible says, be you holy for I am holy. Be you merciful for I am merciful. This is the message of the cross. The cross that gives rest from the power and the curse of sin. The Bible says, by the shedding blood of Jesus, our sins were blotted out. The written ordinances that was contrary to us was blotted out and nailed to the cross. It was a nail to a cover. Your sins was a nail to a cover. Your sins was a nail to, to any shrine, to any track or stones. But it was nailed to the cross. People of Scotland, today I'm here to let you know you cannot do good works to save your life. You cannot be, have a religion to save your life. You cannot have, say a prayer, a Hail Mary's. To, to receive forgiveness forgiveness comes when we call upon his name he says whosoever will call on the name of Jesus with a repentant heart will be saved today is a day of salvation and Jesus is commanding all men everywhere repent repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand as I come to the mess, end of my message there is the ABC need to receive in eternal life this ABCD to receive an eternal life doesn't give you an eternal religion. 
found it in Catholicism or Paganism or Darwinism or Atheism or, or Islam or Buddhism or Shintoism or Mormonism, this eternal life brings you into unity with God. And today, the Lord is calling. He says, come unto me, O you are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. The aim to receiving eternal life is that you admit you are a sinner. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God, my friend. Do you have a track? Hallelujah. The gift of, the, the Bible says the wages of sin is death, but God's gift is eternal life. We must admit we are sinners because we all come short of the glory of God. None of us is holy. I was not holy. The only thing that has made me holy and holy is being separated from the world and connected to God. Holiness is not tied to wearing a religious clothes. Holiness is tied when one becomes one with divinity. Friends, today is a day of salvation. Today, it is a day that the Lord has made. The key to receiving eternal life is that you believe in Jesus. Do not believe in Muhammad. Do not believe in Buddha or Krishna or Baha. Do not believe in the founder of religion because none of these religious founders resurrected from the grave. The Bible says it very clearly, John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that He sent His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him will not perish but have everlasting life. And friends, today, we're here to dispense this life, not a religion, but the life of God that taken away the sinful life, the love of God that taken away the sins of the world, the blood of Jesus that remits sins and brings forgiveness, the blood, the blood of Jesus that gives men access to the holies of holies. Hallelujah. Today we preach this life of Jesus. Do you have Jesus in your life? Do you have him in your life? Are you scared of Jesus? Because he's the one that is coming back. No religious founder is coming back by Jesus. Today it is a day of salvation. The seed to receiving eternal life is that you confess your sins. Friends, I was a criminal. If I went to court and confessed my crimes to the judge, he would not be faithful and just like our heavenly father in heaven. The Bible says God is faithful and just to those who confess their sins. He said, if you confess your sins, I am faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from every unrighteousness. But friends, if I commit a crime and I confess my crime to the judge, he will not execute faithfulness and justice to forgive me of my sins. But rather, he will throw me in prison. And on top of it all, if he's a racist judge because I'm a black boy, he will send me in prison for a long time. But you see, we serve a God who is not a racist. He said, if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from every unrighteousness. If I did confess my sins to the judge, he will send me in prison. And after I serve my prison time, he will give me a criminal record. But we serve a God. When we confess our sins, he cleanses you of every unrighteousness. He doesn't put any criminal record to your name. He blots out your transgressions. He erases sins. So when a man is born again, a simple man becomes born again. His record as a sinner is blotted out. The only thing that eradicates and gives man a clean slate is not the blood of Muhammad, the blood of Buddha, the blood of Krishna, the blood of Baha, the blood of Confucius, the blood of Charles Russell and Joseph Smith. The only blood that can give man a clean slate and not give him a criminal record or a simple record is the blood of Jesus. Today, Friends in Scotland, call upon the name of the Lord and confess your sins for the God who sent his son Yeshua can blot our transgression. The deed, the deed to receiving eternal life is that you deny yourself. Friends, many of you believe in Jesus, but you have not denied yourself. He said if you confess, if you deny yourself and pick up your cross, he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from every unrighteousness. Friends, today is a day of salvation. There are many people, gangsters, who have crosses on their neck but not carrying the cross. They confess their sins. They believe in Jesus. That's why they have a Jesus cross on their neck. They admit they're gangsters, they're thugs, even the lesbian, the homosexual, the one that opposes babies, the liars, the hypocrite. They do confess their sins, but when it comes to denying their sinful lifestyle, 
When it comes to denying the gangster life. When it comes to denying the drug dealing life. When it comes to denying the hustling life. The frostless life. The prostitution life. Denying the homosexual lifestyle. The bisexual lifestyle becomes a problem. But Jesus said if any man will come up to me, say they believe in Jesus, and claim that Jesus loved him, let them deny themselves, and pick up the cross, and follow him, today, if you are following Jesus, deny yourself, that you will inherit eternal life, deny yourself of everything God deems as sin, even if your government endorses the sin that God deems as sin, it doesn't give you eternal life, nor will it really make you inherit eternal life, or inherit the kingdom of God, uh, of heaven, your government signature will end on the earth. But there is a signature in heaven that is everlasting. It's a signature of the name of Jesus. Yeah. Come and be endorsed by the name of Jesus as a righteous man. It says, if a man confesses sins, he will be forgiven. And he will be cleansed of every sin. Come ye to the water, Scotland. As I sound the alarm, I'm here to command all men in Scotland. Repent, repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent. For the Lord Jesus is coming again. With the voice of an archangel. With the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will be raised. And those who are alive in Jesus will be raised. When the trumpet blows. People of Scotland. Would you be among the number. Of those that will be taken. Or would you be among the number. Who will be cast into the lake of fire. The trumpet will be blown one day. And as I sound the alarm. I cry out. Repent Scotland. Because life is short and eternity is long. Repent from your sins. Repent from your idolatry. Repent from your race. Repent from your home manga. Repent from your own belief. For Jesus is coming. Repent from your sodomy. Repent from aborting babies. Repent from your hypocrisy. For Jesus is coming. Hallelujah. came to give life and life and in his abundance you know 
I was never a man of faith. I was never a man of religion. I followed many other ways. I tried so many ways. But when I laid my life down to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and I said, I've had enough. I need change. I am broken. I was down in the gutter. I was homeless, begging for food, begging for things to eat. Nobody would look at me. They would just walk past me. But you know, somebody came to preach this message of Jesus to me. They come to preach the good news. And they told me about a loving God that took my place. You know, I was never always a holy man. I wasn't always a preacher. I was once trapped in my sinfulness, in my wickedness. I was addicted to cocaine. I was addicted to alcohol. I was addicted to the things of this world. You know, when I stood in the bars and the clubs and I was drunk and I was jumping around, people celebrated me. You know, one thing I've noticed that you can do many things upon these streets. You can run around drunk. You can run around half naked. You can run around and do what you want. And people won't even bat an eyelid at you. But let me tell you, my friends, the thing when you begin to preach the name of Jesus, when you mention the name of Jesus, you become hated. You become a target. But let me tell you, Jesus even proclaimed. He said, you will be hated for my name's sake. And I stand here and I proclaim the name of Jesus and I lift the name of Jesus up higher than any other name because the name of Jesus is higher than Muhammad, it's higher than the Pope, it's higher than the Queen, it's higher than the King, it's higher than anything. You know, people are shouting, shouting Allah Akbar as they walk past me. Why? Because Jesus is hated, the truth is hated, but Jesus came and the truth set you free. You, you love Jesus. You can shout that all you want, my friend. You can shout that all you want. But Jesus loves you. And one day, all of us are going to stand before a holy God. And we're going to have to give an account of our lives. And but my old life, the way I used to live it, I was certain of going to hell, of eternal punishment. I was certain of that. And then through the preaching and the message of the cross of Jesus... You know, I have been redeemed from that eternal punishment. You know, God is a good God. He's a merciful God and he loves you. In the Gospel of John 3.16, it said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to whomsoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. There is no other name under the name of the heavens that you can be saved by. It is only through Jesus. Jesus came, he walked amongst us, and he took the blame and the weight of the world of the sins upon his shoulders as he hung there on a cross. He bled out for you, and he bled out for me. Why? So we can have victory, that we can have eternal life, that we can celebrate with him. You know, listen, I'm not perfect. The word of God says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You know, I was once a sinner. I was once broken. And it took the love of Jesus Christ to come and set me free. As I said, my friends, when I was caught in my drunkenness and my wickedness, no, nobody would stop me. People would clap me on as I would dance half naked in the bars on the tables as a drunkard. But my friends, my friends, when I stand here and lift up one name, one name, I am hated. But I thank God that Jesus said himself, you'll be hated for my name's sake. Today is the day of salvation, my friends. Today you can have a new life. Today your life could be turned around. You don't have to be trapped in with depression, with anxiety. You don't have to be trapped carrying the burdens of your sinfulness on your shoulders anymore. You can lay it down at the foot of the cross. The foot of the cross which Jesus died for you and for me. Come on. Come on, Glasgow. This was once a nation of faith. This was once a nation of godliness. But it's time. Um, thank you. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, my friends, I just want to touch upon a, a very tricky subject that's going on right now. Out in the Middle East, there's a conflict going on. And both sides are fighting. There's innocent children dying. Innocent people that are dying for the sake of what? For the sake of religion. 
My prayer today for Palestine, my prayer for Israel is that they meet the Prince of Peace. They come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and they invite him into their heart. They invite him into their heart and they say, Lord, Jesus, come and give me peace. Bring peace to this nation. Bring peace to our nation. Bring peace to our land. You know, this is the thing. There's such a conflict going on. And people are here protesting today. But the sad truth is, there's people on both sides that don't even know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, the Bible has one thing promised. There's two destinations that await us. And those destinations are heaven or hell. Are you going up or are you going down? Today is the day of salvation. The word of God says repent and believe in the gospel of Jesus and you shall be saved. It doesn't say repent and believe in King Charles. It doesn't say repent and believe in the Pope. It doesn't say repent and believe in Jesus. Hinduism. It doesn't say repent and believe in Islam. It says repent and believe in the name of Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. My friends, my friends, you don't have to be trapped in religion today. You don't have to be controlled by your religion. See, Christianity is the only religion in the world where God came and sacrificed himself for us. Every other God of every other religion wants you to make sacrifices for him. But God came in the form of man, in the form of Jesus Christ, and he became the living sacrifice that me and you can be set free, that we can be set free. And if we accept him, invite him into our hearts, we can be a part of his kingdom. We can be sons and daughters of God. We can be brothers and sisters with Christ Jesus. The word of God says that we are joint heirs with Jesus. My friends, my friends, today is the day of salvation. Time is running out. And let me tell you, whether you believe in God or not, whether you believe in God or not, one day you will stand before God and you will give an account of your life just like I will. I will stand before a holy God and give an account of my life. I'm, I'm asking you today, if you was to die in your sleep tonight and you were given an account of your life, would God grant you access into heaven or hell? The choice is yours. God is a God that gave us free will. We don't have to accept him. We don't have to believe in him. But let me tell you, when you believe in the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the great I am, his name is Jesus Christ. And he died upon the cross for you. You know, people used to look down upon me when I was homeless, when I was a junkie, when I was broken. But today, Jesus looks down upon me. And the only words that I want to hear is, well done, my good and faithful servant. Today, I come here to tell you that you are loved. That Jesus loves each and every one of you. I don't care what you are going through right now. I don't care your background. I don't care the color of your skin. I don't care of your gender. Because I want you to know that Jesus loves you and he wants to know you. He wants to know you and he wants to restore you. He wants to restore you into goodness. He wants to restore you. If you are sick, he wants to restore you and heal you today. Hallelujah. No, no, what does he mean? Demon. What does he mean? Dream it, it's life. Yeah, yeah, I know. What is it? Say, explain it to them. Ceasefire. Right? Ceasefire. Yeah. Ceasefire. Yeah. Tell, them, tell them, tell them. Tell them, tell them what you tell, tell them. What you feel. Tell, tell them what you, what you fucking feel. Like. Why, why are you angry? Why are you angry? See, why are you angry at us? What are you doing right now? We're just telling you, tell them. So, so we're, we're, we're preaching the good news. For them, for you. For the kingdom of God. We're not doing it for any religion. We're not I'm doing a Christian. It. Are you a Christian? Yes, fucking. Well, so, yeah, why yes, you you're Christian. What, so why are you pissed off? So why are you pissed off? Where's yeah. Christianity? I don't know. No, no I'm, I'm from Glasgow, my friend. I live here. Yeah, I'm from England originally, but I'm here. Why are you coming here? Who do you support? I don't support anyone. I don't support anyone. I support Jesus. Sorry? Sorry for what? Sorry for what? You need to stay calm. You're shaking. You're, sh you're full of anger. You're full of anger. You're full tell of them. Anger. Tell the world. Palestine. What you Every day the past day, you understand that? No yeah. one stopped to talk to you this morning. Well, 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 several people have stopped to talk. Several people have stopped to eat.
Today is a day of salvation. We call it a day I'm off. So it's almost five o'clock. I go be in London. I met me and my brother Chris. Hallelujah. The assignment is done. We had a guy who supports Palestine full of hate. Maybe even though people want peace on the earth, they come from a place of hate. The only way they they can have peace is that they will destroy Israel. You see, and that's the spirit of anger. See, those who are fighting for unity between Israel and um, and um, and Palestine, they, they're speaking from a place of hate, not from a place of love. Not from a place of the secret place. And I don't support, like me and my brother, we said this one thing. Not that we don't stand with Israel, but we stand for Jesus. I will not stand with men who will use their own carnal and their flesh to deal with an issue that is eternal. I will not stand for that madness. We will stand for the truth. And anybody that stands with Jesus, we stand with them. Amen. We can pray for the peace of Jerusalem and it's the peace of the city. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? That the you guys don't know what you're talking about. You're standing with carnal men who have rejected the Messiah. And then you're praying for carnal men who are rejecting the wisdom of God, which is Jesus. And I don't stand for that nonsense. You won't see me say, I stand for Israel and all those nonsense. But you see me stand for Jesus. Now, if a people reject the Messiah, and the Bible says very clearly, pray for the peace of Jerusalem, the city. Now, what makes another thing you realize that in the book of Revelation, it speaks about the city. It speaks about um, the bride. And the bride is a, is a unification of men who have come under Christ. Amen. Now, Jerusalem is a city compact together where people gather and praise God. Now, if these people are not praising and obeying His commandments, brothers and sisters, that's why God is going to allow tribulation to come because it will be there to open their eyes. And as you are praying, pray that the eyes of the Jewish people will be open. Pray that the eyes will be open to know the Savior because by the revelation, by the encounter with the Savior, they can now dispense peace in the world. Israel was set apart to be a blessing to the families of the earth. But now God has now set apart a people from various nations, set apart to evangelize to the world. And that is why we go ye therefore and preach this gospel. And we're not going to stand for hate. We're not going to propagate hate. We're going to pray from a place of love. And our desire is that all men will be saved. My desire is that Palestine will be saved. My desire is that Israel will be saved. All men. I don't pray for a particular people. I pray for all men. We lay down our lives. Like Jesus laid down his life, not only for the Jewish people, he laid down his life for all men. The Bible says, for God so loved the world. If you want to know God's eternal plan, was not only to save a race of people or a nation, but was to save the whole human race. He shed his blood for the whole human race. And God has shed his blood for the Palestines, hallelujah, and they shed his blood for the Israelites, for the Africans, for everyone. And so now, this is it. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Pray for his peace. Pray for his peace. Pray for his peace. Because these same people hate Christians. They hate Christians, persecute Christians, and they do all of that. And let me tell you, the Bible says, whatever you do to one of mine, you, it might as well not have been born. And so if leaders, Jewish leaders are hating Christians, and the Bible says, whatever you do to one of these, you have done to me. They will face the consequences. They're killing the prophets. They will pay for it. We must pray for the city. And you should know what the city of God is like. You see, Abraham sought a city whose foundation was God. Now, if the foundation of this world, of this war that is going on, is not of God, my brothers and sisters, you are praying the wrong thing. Pray for the peace. Pray that the foundation of every war, of every fight, will be from the standpoint of the peace, of the Prince of Peace, or else there will never be peace between Palestine and Israel. And until Shiloh comes, there will never be peace. The Bible says, when Shiloh comes, that will be the gathering of the nation. Stop that thing and turn follow Christians who are ignorant. Yeah, I stand for so and so. You don't know where you're standing. When we mention Israel, you gotta think about the covenant, the covenant people. 
and the covenant will bring salvation stand with the covenant because you are saved by the covenant of god not by the name of a nationality this is not a zionist this is a covenant and people who have a covenant with god are set apart god bless you have a blessed day this is your brother andre calling here